within a community. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So just to summarize, I am taking investment management class. We started with bond valuation. We discussed the concept of pricing. Okay. And uh, I think we have, we noted down the formula of pricing also, right? Today, what we are going to understand is we are going to understand the, uh, today we are going to understand the concept of how theorems are being discussed or how theorems are developed as far as uh, this particular unit is concerned of bond valuation. So we are going to see today the theorems that are there. Okay. And one such theorem that we have seen, we have seen in the previous class itself. These theorems are actually easy to understand provided you know the logic behind it. So today with logic, I'm going to tell you how do we arrive at the valuation of this particular theorem or how do we discuss the, these theorems as far as bond valuation is concerned. Again, from your exam point of view, these theorems are very important. They are usually asked for around eight to 10 marks. All bond five, uh, all, there are five theorems that have been asked and all five bond theorems have to be written with the concept, with an explanation, with an example and the meaning out of it. So all these things comes for full 10 marks. And like this, we have 10 theorems. So theorem number one is available on your screen. Okay. And I'm going to just discuss the concept of uh, theorem number one. I told you in the WhatsApp message also that keep your, uh, you know, mm, PV tables, keep your PV table and a um, calculator handy because we are going to discuss the uh, bond theorems. See, when I'm telling you something, you should not believe me. You should cross verify. That is the reason I constantly keep you or ask, ask you to have a back test. That means you have to test it, whether I, what I'm, whatever I'm saying, whether it is true or no, you have to test it. And for that reason, we are going to test all those theorems once again today to understand whether the meaning that I have telling you. Is it matching with the example that we have discussed? That is what we are going to understand today. So the first theorem that we are going to discuss today is theorem number one. And theorem number one specifically talks about the price of the bond, that is the market price of the bond. And it talks about the relationship with yield. Okay. So it basically talks, it tells you that price is inversely proportional to yield. This is what the bond theorem, first bond theorem is telling you. Now we have to understand whether this concept is true or no. So what the, for that, what we have taken is we have taken two bonds. We have bond A, okay. And we have bond B. So under bond A, the par value or the face value of the bond in both the cases is same. Okay. The rate of interest or the coupon payment, I'll just make this as coupon payment so that things are easy for you to understand. So this is coupon payment. So coupon payment is 10% in both the cases. Time frame, that is N or T, whatever you can call, okay, is same for both the cases. Now, this is what we have to understand. So basically, we have to calculate what should be the price of the bond. Specifically, it says what should be the market price of the bond. So to calculate this, I'm going to use the formula P is equal to, okay, C into bracket present value interest factor annuity for R for N number of years plus M into bracket present value interest factor R and N. Now here, uh, I believe you have your PV tables with you. So what I'm going to take is I'm going to see what is my coupon rate. So what will be my coupon rate in this particular case? I want some one of you to calculate this. Please calculate what is the coupon rate on of 10% on 1000 rupees. What is 10% on 1000 rupees is what I want you to calculate. What is 10% of 1000 rupees? Is it 100 rupees? Yes, sir. So your C is going to be 100. Your C is going to be 100. Now, the yields are given. So in basically, R is given here. 
okay so this r that is there this r is given here 18% we are required to calculate price now i have arrived at this particular value i have arrived at this particular value but i want to physically calculate this and tell you whether whatever i am saying is true or false so we'll keep the price we'll arrive at the price whether we'll see whether we arrive at the same price or no so what we'll see what we'll do is we'll take r as 18% in the first case for bond a calculate the price of calculate the price of bond a then we'll make r as 8% and then calculate the value of bond b so as of now calculate the value of or the price of bond a okay calculate the price of bond a can somebody do it can somebody do this find out what is the present value in yes sir annuity for r r is what 18% for n what is n for 2 years find out the value and tell me what is the price of the bond so that pbifa it will be in the format only no sir that what the pv okay. no sir we didn't get it i think if you are accessing from your mobile then you will not get it okay okay sir so because if i if you given access through your laptop or something or pc then definitely it will come okay sir hmm? can somebody calculate the value Please calculate the value quickly. Is anyone calculating the value? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that PBIFA is zero point seven zero point seven one eight two, sir. Which one? That PBIFA. No. PBIFA. Annuity, annuity cannot be less than one. Annuity has always has to be more than one. will do one thing i will share I just share this screen quickly so not waste time on this i will share uh, another screen quickly so that you are easy, it is easy for you now just look at this 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 is the excel sheet that i had shared you okay now this is future value we don't want future value we don't want present value also we don't want present value we want present value of annuity this is what we want now look for 18% look for 18% look for 18% and for 2 years 
clear? Look for 18% for two years. So let us see what is 18% for two years. So this is the period. 1.5656. Right. So this is going to be your answer. This is your present value interest factor annuity. Correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is one value. So 100 into 1.566 is what you have to do. 100 is nothing but your coupon rate into 1.566. Close the 156. Value. Plus M. That is your maturity value. That is 1000 into present value interest factor. So we have to go for present value lump sum. This particular column. Okay. Look for 18%. Look for 18% for two years. How much is it? Zero point seven one eight. So it is zero point seven one eight. So this is what you have to check. So thousand into point seven one eight. Multiply, see what is the answer that you get. And add the total, find what is the price that you get. Are you getting 874? 870. Yes, sir. 874. You're getting it? Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Right. So that is what I'm trying to tell you. You have to test whatever I say. You have to just test it. So here, I've used this value and I have found out 874. So this is the price. So what it means, when the bond, when the yield increases, when the yield increases, the price has to decrease. Just look at this. The yield is, okay. Here your coupon rate is 10%. So from 10%, it has gone to 18%, right? And because of this, what has happened? Because of this, what has happened? The price has gone down, right? From 1000 rupees, face value, the price has gone to 874. So an increase in interest rate, so just look at this, an increase in yield or increase in the yield, what has happened? From 10%, it went up to 18%. And because of this, what happened? The price from 1000 rupees came to 874. Are you able to understand this value? What it means? It means that when yield goes up, when yield goes up, the price has to come down. So which means price is inversely proportional to yield. That is what it says. That is the first theorem. Now, if this is the case, the other side also has to be true, which means now the Coupon rate is 10%. So from 10%, the yield, sorry. So from 10%, the coupon rate has gone to, uh, the yield has gone to 8%. From 10%, the yield has gone to only 8%. Look what will happen to the price. Just calculate it with the same thing. You will arrive at the price. What does it mean? It means that we are tr trying to establish whether this particular relationship satisfies or no. That is what we are trying to understand. So which means price is inversely proportional to yield. I had been telling you this, but now I am proving it to you that if yield increases, the price has to go down. And when the price goes, uh, no, or when the yield goes down, the price has to increase. This is what I'm trying to tell you as far as first bond theorem is concerned. Clear? Any doubts in understanding this? No, sir. All of you clear with it, clear with it. Or all, uh, all of you clear with it. Aryan Jakan or please answer me the question. How will you solve question? Uh, how will you solve this? How will you arrive at how did I arrive at the value of bond? How did I arrive at value of 1035? How did I arrive at this particular value? Please tell me, Aryan Jakan. Hello, sir. What formula did I use? Hello. What formula did I use? Aryan, I'm asking you something. What formula did I use?
know, Aryan, why did I catch you? Because last two classes you did not attend. And you cannot argue with me because Hello? whenever I took a Hello, class, sir? I have posted the photograph in the same group. Now please tell me how did I yes, arrive sir. at this particular value of 1035. Aryan, quickly tell me. Sir, uh, don't know, sir. You don't know? Quickly, Aryan, don't waste my time. Do you know the answer or you don't know the answer? Sir, uh, sir actually, I don't know, sir. What no, do sir. No, you, do you know the answer or you don't know the answer? No, sir. No. I don't know, sir. Okay. You will have a special assignment today on only bond valuation. Okay, I'll give you a special assignment only on bond valuation today. Okay. Because you are not attending the classes. Okay, you have to take this assignment and by coming Saturday, not Saturday, coming Friday, you have to submit with the assignment. Clear? Fine. Yes, sir. Yes. Next. Gautam is here. Puja Kamath. We'll proceed with the next assign uh, with the next theorem. Theorem two talks about okay another important concept. Theorem two talks about the yield on the bond with respect to the time. It talks about the yield on the bond. So here, bond two or theorem two talks about yield. Talks about yield and it also talks about time. And what does it say? If a bond has a certain time to mature, it says if a bond has certain time to mature, okay, so this is time to mature. So this is five years to mature, four years to mature, three years to mature, two and one. Okay. And this is thousand rupees, the face value of the bond. Here the price goes up and here the price goes down. Okay. It means that whether the bond is at a discount here or whether the bond is at a premium here. Okay. Initially, as the time to maturity is more, there will be either a premium here or there will be a discount here. But as we proceed towards maturity, as we proceed towards maturity, this premium or discount starts coming to the face value or starts coming to the towards the face value. That is what it says. I repeat once again, okay, for those who have not understood, please, please pay attention here. It bond two talks about a relationship between time to maturity and it also talks about the yield. It says that as the time to maturity comes closer, whether there is a discount on the bond or whether there is a premium on the bond, it will become zero or it, otherwise it will become, sorry, it will come close to maturity. It will come close to the uh, face value of the bond. That is what it says. Clear? So just look at this. Here, the par value of the bond is 1000 rupees in both the cases. Okay. Rate of interest is same. Okay. The only difference now here is bond A has two years to mature, bond B has three years to mature. Okay. And depending on that, I have to calculate what is my market price. That is the P value is what I have to calculate. The yield on both the bond is same. Okay, the yield on both the bond is same. Now, what whether the bond is at a discount and how much is the discount, that is what we are trying to sol solve it. So I'm using the same formula, P is equal to, sorry, P is equal to C into bracket present value interest factor. I'm using the same formula, but only thing is, just look at this. Since bond A has only two years to mature, its discount is lesser. Bond B, bond A has only two years to mature, so its discount is lesser. Bond B has three years to mature, so its discount is more. The same point I am trying to tell you is if a bond has a certain number of years to mature, so let us say the bond has five years to mature here, four years to mature, three, two, one, and zero. What does it mean? 
initially whether there is a premium or whether there is a discount this is a premium this is a discount whether the bond is at a premium or a discount as the time progresses as we move towards maturity okay whatever is the discount and whatever is the premium on that particular bond starts becoming equal to the face value of the bond starts becoming equal to the face value of the bond so here just look at this it has two years to mature it has two years to mature in our case so the discount is only 81 rupees but bond b has three years to mature so if bond b has three years to mature what is the discount available on this it is 114 so the longer the tenure the bond has to mature the lesser will be the the longer the tenure the bond has to mature the more will be the discount the lesser the bond has to mature lesser will be the discount that is what it trying it tries to tell you again how did i arrive at these two figures i use the same formula present value interest factor annuity and then i arrived at this particular answer there is no rocket science here it is just i am using only one formula and annuity value and present value and then arriving at whether i am having a discount or whether i am having a premium whatever is the case the answer is in front of you clear any doubts in understanding this Tejashwini, no, any doubts in understanding this? Yutika, Tejashwini, Rashmi. No sir. No sir. No sir, no doubt. Okay, fine. So, I repeat once again. Can anyone summarize? What does bond A tell you? Bond A, oh, sorry, not bond A. Bond, bond theorem one. What does bond theorem one tell you? It talks about. I repeat, bond one. or bond one theorem talks about price is inversely proportional to yield theorem two talks about yield and time clear are you able to understand you are getting the answer here theorem one talks about price and yield theorem two talks about yield and time this is yield and time okay now if i remove this y from both the sides what remains only p remains and only t remains right p remains and t remains in th from theorem 1 price remains and from theorem 2 time remains right now let's see what theorem 3 talks about theorem 3 talks about bond price and relationship okay i am repeating once again don't get confused theorem 1 talks about yield is inversely proportional to price any doubts in this no theorem 2 what does it tell you it talks about yield and time so in both the cases what is common in both the theorems what is common yield is common right in both the theorems yield is common so if i cancel the yield if i cancel this particular yield what remains i have only 1 divided by pi and i have t so theorem 3 basically talks about time and price clear so theorem 3 talks about time and price please understand this okay now let us come to theorem 3 what does theorem 3 tell you it says if the bond remains if the bond yield remains same that means bond is constant okay over its life the discount and the premium amount will decrease please understand the discount and the premium amount will decrease at an at an increasing pace this statement is very important the discount uh, sorry the premium or discount whatever is there will decrease as at a faster rate as the life gets shorter okay now again how did i arrive at this particular value very simple i use the same formula p is equal to c into bracket present value interest factor annuity plus m plus present value interest factor rm the same formula i have used only thing is only thing is okay here i don't have c there is no c given to me coupon rate is not given so if coupon rate is not given i will assume coupon rate as zero If coupon rate is zero, then what happens? P is equal to 
p into bracket present value interest factor nat r n plus m into bracket present value interest factor r n so if c is zero what will happen if c is zero this entire term is going to become zero this entire term is going to become zero which means what is left we have only this value are you able to understand what i am trying to tell you are you able to understand what i am trying to tell you yes sir yes sir okay so which means now if i have m as 1000 rupees okay present value interest factor for r you can take r at 10% okay and you can take n as 5 years okay if you apply the concept of present value factor here if you apply the concept of present value factor here okay for the fifth year you will get 620 for the fourth year you will get 683 for third year you will get 751 so on and so forth if you observe if you just look at this these values start increasing right these values start increasing over a period of time that means when this time is going to become zero okay this will be 1000 rupees okay why if n becomes zero if n becomes zero present value factor present value interest factor for for anything is going to be for zero value is always going to remain 1 so if you multiply 1000 which is nothing but m into 1 what do you get you get 1000 only right so what it means when zeroth year comes in we have 1000 rupees what does it mean it means that as you go away from this particular line or as you proceed towards maturity as you proceed towards maturity whatever is the discount that you have here 620 683 uh, 751 whatever is the discount that is there, there slowly the discount starts reducing in other words if i have to just plot okay i will plot 620 here i have bigger discount here next i have 683 a little bit lesser discount 751 okay next 826 then i have 909 and finally i have 1000 Are you getting this? Are you able to understand? So it says that as if the yield is constant, okay, the discount and the premium amount will decrease. This is the decrease in the value at a very fast rate. At some point of time, if you check the difference between these two, the difference is keeps on increasing very drastically. That is what it says. The distance keeps on increasing. If you don't believe me. Just subtract six eighty three minus six twenty, seven fifty one minus six eighty three, eight twenty six minus seven fifty one, nine not nine minus this value. If you subtract this value, the difference amount keeps on increasing. The difference amount keeps on increasing as you proceed down. The difference amount keeps on increasing. That is what it says. The difference amount will keep on increasing as the life gets shorter. as soon as you come become close to maturity the life gets shorter and when the life gets shorter whatever is the discount that you have that also will start reducing drastically that is what it says any doubts in understanding this so please be quick if you have any doubts you raise your hand else we'll proceed Any doubts, please? No, sir. No, sir. Are you understanding what I am trying to tell you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only thing is, see, you cannot study this subject by just looking. You have to have a present value table in front of you. Keep a calculator handy with you. Quickly, you should be able to calculate. Only then, you will be, uh, you know, whatever I am talking will start making sense for you. If you plainly listen to me, these things will never, you will never be able to understand this. 
clear? So we'll proceed with the uh, next theorem. This is theorem four. Now theorem four is very, very critical because there are a lot of things that we have to discuss in theorem number four. Okay. Just look at this statement first and then I'll tell you what is it. What does it say? It says that whenever a price increases, whenever price increases, and why does price increase? Because bond, uh, the yield has gone down. So this effect, this effect will always be greater than decrease in price and increase in yield. I repeat, here we had increase in price and because the price increased, the yield decreased. Because the price increased, the yield decreased. This effect, this effect will always be greater. This effect will always be greater than a decrease in price due to increase in yield. Okay, you don't believe me? Looks confusing. Solve this particular example on your own. You'll be able to get the answer. First, calculate the price of the bond Okay, there are three things that you have to do. One, calculate the price of the bond using the formula P is equal to C into bracket, present value interest factor annuity. Okay, for R. Now, what is your R here? What is your R? Okay, R is going to be take it as 10% only. Initially, we'll take it as 10% and time will take it as five years. Okay, plus M into bracket present value interest factor at 10% okay for five years we'll take this you will get some answer here you will get some answer when you calculate now what you have to do second what you have to do again do the same thing again do the same thing but what are you going to do here instead of taking 10% you take it as 8% here instead of taking at 10% you take it at 8% here also you take it at 8% rest everything remains same calculate the answer third thing do the same thing again okay instead of taking this 8% now okay make this as 12% for 5 years here also you make it 12% for 5 years check what is the answer Check what is the answer, okay? And then, So when you calculate this, you will get some answers. Okay, you will get some three answers. This answer is a base. Okay, this is the base. This is the base. Okay, now when you get this particular answer, this answer has arised because yield has gone down from 10% it has gone to 8% which calculated with 8% and because of this the price increased. So this effect or this answer is going to be greater than this particular answer. That is what I'm trying to tell you. Clear? Any doubts in understanding this? Please calculate this. You cannot just blindly follow this the way I'm telling you. You have to solve it on your own. Only then you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. So please solve this particular bond uh, you know, theorem four of bond valuation and only then you will be able to understand whether this particular equation that I've written down, whether it is really true or not. Clear?
last theorem i'll just discuss today the last theorem i'll just discuss it today it says please understand it says change in bond price change in bond price will be a lesser for a percentage change in the bond yield if roi are higher that is what it says it takes time for us to understand what is the meaning it says change in the bond price look at the price okay look at the price here so a change in the bond price okay change in the bond price will be lesser for a percentage change in the bond yield if rois are higher it basically means by what percentage our roi changes by what percentage our yield changes okay price will not change in the same proportion in other words if my yield please pay attention if my yield drops down by 2% okay my price will not drop by 2% that is what it says my price will drop less than 2% practically speaking my price will drop less than 2% that is what it's trying to tell you this is the meaning of the word or this is the actual explanation for the theorem 5 clear for whatever percentage if the bond yield has gone up by 2% i repeat if the bond yield has gone up by 2% then proportionate price change will happen less than 2% sorry proportionate price change will happen less than 2% that is what is the meaning of this particular theorem number 5 that is the whole concept of this clear again the examples are mentioned in front of you i have already mailed the ppts for this please try it out check it cross verify it and only then get yourself confirm that whatever i am trying to tell you is true or false clear so there i have left some things for you to check on your own because unless you cross verify unless you check it on your own please don't believe anything as far as this particular subject is concerned you should be satisfied with whatever values that i have put on the slide you should be convinced that these values are practical these values are achievable and what is the mechanism by which these values have been arrived i once again request all of you please verify all these data that i have given you only then you will be able to understand whether i am making any sense or whether it is only nonsense okay so just check it i have less than a minute left for me for to end this particular class i am going to stop here in my next class we are going to understand okay there are four theories that we have to understand okay that is what i am going to discuss in the next class for your syllabus you have only expectation theory and you have market segmentation theory these are the only two theories that you have you don't have any other theory as far as yield curves are concerned or it's also called as term structure so term structure and yield curves is basically what i am going to discuss in the next class is that clear i know this was a heavy class for you things have been too too many things have been discussed here but unless you make an effort from your side this subject is not going to be a cake walk for you please study read something about this particular class and then come for the next class later in the afternoon i have a tax class i will be discussing problems on capital gain okay so i have solved some problems here i will put it on the slide and we will discuss all these problems and then i'll mail this problems to you is that okay i request everyone to come in the video mode yes sir sir yes. So, what will be the timing of lunch break, sir? Lunch break. From when to when? I'll just ask Prayag sir. Okay, we had some interview yes, today morning. That's the reason the next day, the class also did not happen. But I'll just ask just quickly, everyone. Yes, sir. Come on the. Video mode. fine i will intimate you about the next class before i start so all together we have 28 people who attended this particular class okay so we'll stop here and i'll meet you in the next class please come prepared for next investment class otherwise it will be difficult for you to understand is that okay make an effort from your side if you are wrong i will correct you